Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Today, I'm really excited. I'm speaking with my new friend, Marcus Monterey, and he is the founder of Archimera Robotics. Uh, welcome, Marcus. Tell me a little bit about you and Archimera. Sure. So, yeah, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to the show. It's a great pleasure. hope we're going to have an interesting conversation. And um, yeah, to introduce myself, my, my name is Marcus. I'm the uh, Deputy Managing Director of Archimera Robotics. We are a, an accounting technology company. And um, yeah, my background is basically in uh, sales and marketing. So I have been for the past uh, decade or so in uh, software as a service, uh, different industries. Um, so the very interesting world of accounting and accounting technology is a bit newer to me. I've been in this space for a little more than three years now. And uh, yeah, to give the, the background of our company and, and what we do, we are a technology company. And uh, basically, to put it simple, we deliver, uh, develop and deliver self-learning algorithms. And uh, yeah, th there's a lot of confusion in the space of self-learning services and AI and stuff like that. So basically, basically you could explain it as, you know, we're in sort of a technological shift where software applications are, are gaining the capacity to learn from like incoming data, from the input of humans and being able to continuously like update the delivery to the end user. So that that is sort of my definition of, of self-learning technology. And uh, yeah, we are, we are very niche. We focus on one sort of hard to solve problem and that is uh, the um, automation of data entry uh, from financial documents. And uh, one other important thing about uh, how we do this is um, we differ in our sort of business model because we strongly believe in a, sort of a new type of era where you want to solve the problem for the end user where they already are at. Uh, so in our case, this is in the actual accounting software user interface that the end user is already familiar with. So we do not provide any like add-on application or anything like that. We do provide an API service. So like any accounting software could integrate our technology and present it to the end users in their own user interface. Wow. So what are some of the, the biggest software, you know, again, we've got an audience of, of CPAs in the US predominantly, but what are some of the big softwares that you're dealing with? You mentioned uh, ER, ERP. Um, what are some of the big names? And, and then we'll get into sort of the, the the why of it in a minute but um yeah so sure we have context yeah when we talk about the uh, north americans it's a very quick and simple answer we have no customers in the north americas right now we have uh, started off in uh, the nordics in in europe and uh, yeah we sort of view that as our trial market uh, we have uh, built the api service to be sort of language agnostic and uh, actually released an API service available for uh, North America just less than one month ago. So it's, it's up for grabs for either an accounting software company or somebody building integrations to ERP software, as you mentioned, would also be a, a potential partner to us. Um, so it's, um, it's uh, perhaps important to make the distinction that our end user is typically an accountant or a bookkeeper, but we need the partner in between uh, to build the integration to make this technology available for the end users. So we do not deliver it directly to the firm. We deliver it to the software provider of the firm. Okay. That's a good distinction. Thank you, Marcus. Um, now, tell me, how did you get started? You know, what was the origin of, of Archimera Robotics? And how does that, you know, when I think robotics, uh, I have a little simple brain and I think, you know, those welding machines in a warehouse, but uh, I assume there's more to it, in, including the artificial intelligence. 
Um, how did you personally get into this field? Well, actually, I was um, I, I was brought into the field by the CEO, uh, the original founder of Archimera Robotics. And the background is um, I used to work with uh, with this uh, uh, e e-commerce uh, 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 business in the pharmacy uh, industry. So we were delivering medicine to like the healthcare sector. And uh, yeah, it was a, like a, one of those great startup success stories. We uh, started out as four guys in a room, uh, you know, no air conditioning, just doing the first cold calls to potential customers. And uh, five years later, we had hundreds of employees and were delivering medicine to millions of people via hospitals, dentists, and so on. And I sort of got tired of this um, of this uh, big business uh, suit and tie situation. So um, I had a few weeks of vacation, the first uh, three weeks in a row in, in about 10 years. So I decided to just quit without a plan. Uh, so the first day back in office, I just went to my boss and said, I'm, I'm done, I quit. So I actually moved to the countryside uh, with my girlfriend without a plan whatsoever and you know just uh, took one year off uh, in the middle of my life contemplating uh, i built the chicken coop you know stuff like that and uh, so i uh, started i started doing some consulting for startups in you know business to business sales stuff like that so i met yep. this guy kenny and he told me about you know, self-learning uh, algorithms, robotics, and he told me about the accounting technology sector, how much was, was happening there, and, you know, all these uh, buzzwords about AI and all the talk about accountants being replaced by robots and stuff like that. But he had a different vision that he shared with me that, you know, was more more about empowering the professional user. Uh, the the uh, accounting sector is like filled with people with a lot of knowledge, and um, we were talking about how how we could, uh, with the help of, of technology, um, make make the accounting firms have a have a capacity to sort of turn their their staff's knowledge into a sca uh, more scalable asset. You know. So uh, from the beginning, um, uh, when there was a lot of talk a few years ago about you know all of this AI replacing the, the professional accountants and bookkeepers, we sort of took a different stance and decided from the beginning, like, no, we're going to help, help these people. You know, we, we believe in their knowledge and skill sets, and uh, uh, we believe that there, there could be another way. And... Um, yeah, when, when I started at Archimedia Robotics, we had no customers, just this exciting technology. And uh, yeah, we, had, we um, did a market introduction about, what is it, like two years ago. So today we have like thousands of accounting firms and, and companies uh, using the technology. And uh, yeah, we, we get really good feedback from the, the professional users, the, the, uh, the competent accountants and bookkeepers out there. So, I mean, that, that, that has been a great uh, sort of a, a why thing, you know, like helping these people that, that get the message that they're about to be uh, replaced while there's a shortage of accountants and bookkeepers on so many markets, you know, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting field. I love it. Now, um, one of the things that I find, and, and by the way, I, I love your mindset. You know, there, there is a lot of doom and gloom. And um, there's a think tank out of the UK that says there's a 97% certainty that the accounting profession will be eliminated by the robots. Um, the reality is I see that as an opportunity, not as a threat, because... Yeah when you get down to it, what it does is it eliminates all that mindless repetitive stuff um, that allows the, the accountant to sit and be the, the great thinker and, you know, maybe not take a year off and build chicken coops, but, you know, be able to take a <laughs> month to dive deep and solve a big problem rather than being shallow and, you know, just trying to get tax returns done or, you know, filings with governments um, I think there's an opportunity. So 
one of the things I'd like to get to today is what are some of the things, because we could talk about robotics, we could talk about artificial intelligence. What are some of the things that the busy professional, or I'm going to say the overly busy professional, should be grateful that they can abdicate to the robots? And what are the things you are seeing that they should be focusing on as this is my realm and I'm not going to share this with the robot? So let's start first with what are some of the things that you're seeing technology solving that free up a lot of time and, and give accountants that opportunity. Yeah, sure. So where should I begin? Well, it's a, it, it, this could potentially be a very big question uh, conversation for hours, right? But uh, I, I'll try to focus. So basically what, what I have seen, what is easiest for me to describe is like what, what, what we bring to the table to, to um, accountants and, and, uh, um, basically, accountants that have started using our technology in the accounting software they are already using, um, you, you, could, you could describe it as, imagine that the accounting software that you are using uh, starts to learn from your data entry and then automate it in accordance with how you would have done it yourself. Uh, so that's a slight difference from a lot of automation solutions we have seen the past 10 years, like setting up a particular categorization or a particular account, account to one vendor, for example, that will work sometimes good, sometimes not that good. But it, with this technology, you, you would get a, like a small clone of yourself within your accounting software that understands those slight differences between the bookkeeping for different companies that you as a professional understand. So what I have heard from actual accountants using our technology is stuff like uh, they get a, a more predictable workday, they get a more even workday. One accountant um, that I talked about, she, she mentioned that she holds the same level of quality and speed on a good day as a bad day. Uh, and of course, the, the speed is also higher because the data entry is, uh, is um, more automated, right? But I, I believe that a few things that accounting firms could think about when it comes to this sort of technology is one thing uh, would be some people say that compliance compliance is dead or book, bookkeepers will be replaced. Another way to view it is to see it as a, a service where the accounting firm can make more money. Instead of getting rid of it, it's more efficient. You can make more money from it. Uh, now, at the same time, I also spoke to another accountant, a, an accounting firm that tried out this technology and said, no, we're not going to continue with this. Okay, why? Are you unhappy? And she said, no, it, it, um, it cuts uh, down the minutes it takes to do the job, with me, which means, you know, I make less money. So sometimes you also have to make changes to your business model. And so that, that's one thing I see uh, that, that you could make more money from the compliance work with, with this yeah. type of technology. Another thing that, that I find also very interesting is uh, if you look at like on a lot of different markets, uh, you have seen companies that look like technology companies like accounting tech companies but if you look below the surface they are actually sort of accounting firms or bookkeeping companies sometimes they have their own technology sometimes not even so they, they use like i don't know quickbooks or something but their marketing is brilliant and uh I have one example from the Swedish market, like this accounting firm. I first thought that they were a technology company, but they have a bunch of accountants and bookkeepers hired and their marketing that they, you know, push out on Facebook and a place like that is a hundred percent automated bookkeeping. And for this small business owner, yep, it's a hundred percent automated because someone else is doing it, you know? there are humans doing it but i think so this is one suggestion for me for the accounting firm owners 
looking at strategy, marketing, stuff like that. Like look at these technology companies, look at the hybrid firms, how they position the, themselves. Because this type of technology, uh, like our technology is one example of this. There, there will be more. It will be more commonplace. It will show up in more and more accounting software that people are already using. So just by you know using this technology that emerges, keeping a track on what's going on, you could start calling yourself the robo accountants or the AI accountants, <laughs> and you could have just as advanced technology by using uh, you know a lot of bunch of different accounting software out there as these technology hybrid companies. So that that that's uh, uh, one thing I think. Uh, that is good for a firm owner to keep keep track on, you know. And if I can interject, um, you've brought up something that is the bane of my existence, and that's when accountants refuse to innovate because it impacts their billable hours. Mm. And for what it's worth, that was the big, you know, when cloud accounting came around. I actually know accountants <laughs> who said to me, "I will retire before I do that." Because if I'm billing by the hour and cloud accounting can make me 10% more efficient, well, I need 10% more clients. And I, I think this is where, you know, you and I are going to have a little chat. Um, you know, if accountants focus on adding value, not billing for time, mm -hmm. um, the, the reality is if you think about it, you know, reducing the minutes is not a negative. It's actually a positive. Yeah, if you know what to do, and and so I, I'm gonna we'll chat about this, but I'd like to know what you're seeing people doing if they've reduced the minutes on that minutia. You know, nobody loved. I don't know many people who love data entry. There are some. Um, they're, they're special people, and and I admire them for it. But I'm not one of those. Um, if somebody's reducing their time. What are some of the, the, the innovative things you're seeing accountants do to add more value to their clients? You know, they've got your technology in place. How is that changing their business model? Because to me, that's an exciting space, not a, a risk or a threat. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I mean the easiest, easiest answer uh, would be, and I also want to stress, we are not the major uh, uh, force that brings this change at all, but we add to it. And that is definitely a trend going on towards, I mean, looking at uh, uh, business models, pricing models that are, I mean, directly from the, the software as a service space. Uh, I definitely see a, a trend uh, in that department. I, I also want to stress the fact that we do, since we do not sell directly to the firms, we sell to the software companies, then uh, my expertise in the, in the firm area is probably less uh, than a lot of people who talk more directly to firms. But I, when I have been speaking to firms, I, I'm re I recall this meeting with the this um, uh, accountant who, who uh, owns uh, his own practice with about uh, uh, 10 or 12 accountants. And um, I was presenting this new service uh, uh, to them. I mean, our, our technology integrated in, in uh, one accounting software. And, and he, 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 looked like, uh, he, he, he looked like he was thinking very deeply. And he said like, okay, we're, we're gonna have to change our business model. So I think this, this type of technology uh, that we bring about and uh, also just, you know, cloud accounting software and stuff like that, I think uh, it, it, it drives this change uh, in the profession, definitely. Excellent. Now, what would be a scenario, what, what's a pain that either a client is having or the accountant is having that they would want to look at our chimera and say, okay, is this a solution? So what, what are some of the common pain points you're encountering where they're desperate to get your help? Um, you know, what, what kind of solutions are people looking at from you two, from your company? Yeah. I mean, 
uh, the, 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 the quick, easy answer would be time saving, of course. But um, I mean, when I speak to accounting firms, they have uh, a lot of times they have tried uh, a bunch of different um, automation features, functionalities, apps, and so on. But uh, what I hear is like, often there are shortcomings because they are built on either like some approach which is more focused on you know fits all solutions like very simplified uh, automation um, f forcing people to you know automate in the same way like simple strict rules uh, in the settings part of your accounting software and stuff like that so i believe that the the major the major change we can bring about is like an a self-learning automation functionality that learns from you. And it, per perhaps I should give some more concrete examples. Uh, yeah, if you could. So, so it may, to make it more understandable, like, like in the base case, right? Where, when you have Azura One, our API service integrated into an accounting software, uh, the experience for the end user is, <clears throat> for example, you, let, let's take the scenario, you upload a financial document such as a receipt, purchase invoice, salary document, something into the accounting software. So the document is sent to the uh, algorithm through the API connection. The algorithm takes a look at the document and then takes a look at its historical accumulated bookkeeping knowledge models. And what that means is basically it has seen the data entry performed historically by you working at the firm and or your colleagues. And that bookkeeping knowledge is isolated for that particular company, so on a company level. So the software will understand the slight differences in like categorization, the choice of accounts between different companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have... You have two customers, if you're an accountant, they purchase the same thing from the same vendor, but they categorize it differently because they use it differently in their business. And the algorithm will understand this slight difference uh, just by learning from you. Another example would be the level of granularity. So let's say two companies get a, a bill from the like phone and internet company. And one company will just categorize it as one cost on one account. The other one wants to split out the cost on different accounts because it's for some reason important for them to, you know, have a better overview over the financial situation. How much the, does the sales team's phone bills cost or whatever? So you, you will book, book it on, on, on one account for one company and two accounts for another company. And the algorithm would learn the slight differences between these companies. Um, Another level of example would be like you working for the same company and you want to do changes in the categorization, for example, for that company. And you, since the self-learning is continuous, you will get the results uh, automated right in front of your eyes in real time, but you make a change. Now, this change is sent to the algorithm and adds to the continuous self-learning um, knowledge accumulation, so to speak. So the next time around, you will get an updated suggestion in line with the changes that you have made. So mm -hmm. this, this type of technology is, is much more continuously adaptive to how a human works because a lot of systems and software are very stale, very stiff. You get the same result every time. It's rules, you know, but with the self-learning approach, uh, you you experience how the software understands you and and works along with you in, in a whole whole other way. Uh, so per perhaps that makes it a bit a bit uh, more understandable. I hope so. It, it does, and I think that's you know I, I'm getting a little bit of a, a exciting moment because the the reality is you know you've got an employee and you train them and then they leave and then you start from scratch training the next one. 
Mm. Um, the, the thing I would see is, is, and I, I'm assuming here, but you know, equally likely, this system could put up a flag saying, you know, um, historically we've been categorizing that as office supplies. All of a sudden, you're changing it to shop supplies. Like, is is that you know, does it help train your existing staff as well, or is it more? It's just smart. It learns it, and then we don't necessarily need as many staff. So, actually, that's a really interesting example because uh, I don't typically view the situation from that perspective. But that that's a that's a very interesting perspective. And actually, our partner, the accounting software company, could build exactly that functionality based on the feedback they get they get from our algorithm. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's actually very interesting. Uh, I, I'm going to think more about that. So thank you. I have something to, to think about tonight when I, when, I, when I lay awake like I often do. <laughs> but uh, another perspective of, of, of what you're talking about now is, so, so uh, let me use the word robot, okay? Because something is, is it's, uh, educational. So what is a robot in our perspective? Okay, it is simply... Uh, this accumulated bookkeeping knowledge isolated on one company. That is your robot, okay? So you have five different customers. You have five different robots, okay? And uh, what you can do is also say that we have mommy robots and baby robots. Now, the mommy robot, she has the superior knowledge, okay? So I will have uh, one, one of my more, you know, senior members of staff is teaching the mommy robot. Her knowledge is superior. Then I take in the summer intern and I can let the baby robots each representing one other customers, customer of ours, right? Only learn from the mommy robot, but not return any new knowledge to the knowledge pool of our robots. I don't know if, it, I hope you follow. So in this case, yeah. our summer intern comes in, starts bookkeeping for one of our customers, gets pre-populated fields that they check and control. Perhaps they you know, came straight from schools. They have to ask you a few questions, but they get the suggestions. And if they do something wrong, this knowledge will not be sort of saved in the, uh, in the collective um, uh, bookkeeping knowledge memory of the robot. So you could have like, um, uh, ha have a, a, a safer situation for the not so experienced staff, for example. So there's, there's a lot of cool stuff like that you, you could build based on the feedback you get from the algorithms. I, I love that. And again, it, it's, you know, using the the algorithms the robots to train the staff and you know being selective in which staff are training the robots i think is very very important yeah um, could be key yeah yeah i, I think th there's a lot of really cool things that we could cover in that um now what's so uh i i have friends who are have phds in machine learning and and i'll be honest I have a vague idea of what they can do and enough that I could draw a cartoon on a napkin to sort of explain it. Um, what does it mean, you know, in, in terms of time, you know, if somebody's working with robots and, and training them, is it as simple as they do their job and the robot learns it? Or is there, you know, with the human element, you're always taking time to sit down with a human. Yeah, that's a good question, and and um, yeah, sort of sort of glad that you bring up the machine learning aspect also because um, I should also say I'm not a developer. Uh, I'm not an expert in in uh, in the technology. I'm I'm a, I'm a sales guy in my background, so probably the dumbest guy at the company, right? But. Uh, uh, you know, the difference, to put it in layman terms, be between uh, our solution and the typical machine learning approach is like, if you use machine learning, you feed this machine learning model with a bunch of documents, for example, in the case of bookkeeping, right? You, you feed it like 
thousands of, of financial documents and yeah. then you get uh, then you get a result uh, you, the, the model learns now what we do is a bit different we do not use the the machine learning tools from like google or or microsoft or anything like that we built our own algorithms from scratch and one important difference here is that <clears throat> is uh, the uh, how do how do you say the, the the velocity of the learning process so so let's take the sort of the, the simplest dumbest of examples we have this robot which is activated on a company level in the accounting software and it has zero prior bookkeeping knowledge it has never seen a financial document it's not pre-trained with historical data and you okay. activate it in your accounting software and you upload a very first uh, invoice uh, purchase invoice or or perhaps you say bill over there in in Canada. Anyways, you key you get zero results. You key in the data, then you up and this is the very first lesson for this robot. Okay, then you upload another document, uh, perhaps from the same vendor. Uh, if the bookkeeping is very simple, just one category, one account, you would probably get a hundred percent correct result on the very second document. If the document is from a new vendor, you will get a few values correct, such as probably the due date, the total sum, some simple stuff like that. But you wouldn't get any suggestion on the categorization. But as you have performed the data entry for like once or twice for each and every vendor of this particular company, you would already get very good results. So sometimes just take 10 purchase invoices and you would get very good a very good hit rate. So that is not the typical way our partners integrate the service. They will typically use some historical data to pre-train these models. But the, the, uh, the volume of data needed is very, very low uh, per company. So that, that is one way we differ from, from the typical machine learning approaches. Another way is we can also dig down uh, to a document level and, and analyze why, uh, why the algorithms gave uh, a particular suggestion. Uh, but that, that is perhaps the more advanced course of, of, of <laughs> understanding these, these uh, yeah. algorithms. No, I, I love it. And I think, you know, the reality is, you know, there, there's so many, like, you know, not to put words in your mouth, but what I'm envisioning is if somebody's using, so it's okay, I can call it a robot. Um, if somebody's using a robot, I can't help but imagine that, you know, your data entry is going to be faster, which excites me a little because it saves me time. But the big one I see is it's going to be more accurate, um, which means it's more reliable for our customers. Um, now, does the, the robotic piece then get into sort of the communication and the reporting analysis, or is that something where the, the accountant is still applying their craft? Yeah, in, in the case of our technology, we are super niche. Uh, this, this algorithm will only help out in the very process of data entry from the financial documents then that data entry can be used for reports or something like that but that is functionality that is built into the accounting software that's that's not a part of our technology so that's a bit outside of my expertise now marcus in in the interest of time i want to get you back to your day um is there anything i should have asked you that i haven't asked you or anything you'd like to add before we get into sort of action items and next steps? Uh, that's, a, that's a long pause. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, no, not, nothing uh, I can think of uh, spontaneously. I, I had a few written down, but I believe we have covered those. So 
Uh, no, nothing, nothing in particular. Uh, I, I let, let's move on to the to the action, the the next step segment. Awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate your time, and I know this is what you do day in day out is is this the robot space and the the self learning. Uh, what are a couple of action items? You know, um, realistically, my audience is exploring technology and, and not. Um, Let's just say they're not bleeding edge or, or cutting edge. They're more, uh, I would say, late adopters. But for people who are just hearing about artificial intelligence, what are some things they can do to dip their toes in the water and start to start to get more aware of this space? Well, it depends on, on the, the level of curiosity. Uh, but I, I have read a few uh, few good books that I could recommend. One is called, uh, let's see, Life. Uh, is it 3.0 or perhaps 4.0? By um, it's it's a, a Swedish scientist, uh, Max Tegemark, I believe his name is. Um, he's in uh, North America, but that's a that's a great book uh, that makes artificial intelligence a bit easier to understand. Um, another good book would be Prediction Machines, uh, like that book as well. Then, of course, uh, I would also recommend you to um, uh, go, go to our um, developer portal, Azora One developer portal, because we have, of course, a bunch of information for developers there. I mean, aimed for like developers at accounting software or ERP companies, but we also have a section for like business people, accountants, anyone, anybody who, who is more like me, who doesn't really dig too deep into the technology. So uh, on those pages, you can read about uh, the self-learning technology uh, that is very close to home. Uh, and um, the easiest way to find it is to either go to my LinkedIn just look at my name in the LinkedIn. You will find the link there. Uh, the link is, by the way, developer.azora.one. But uh, the easiest way would be just to go to my LinkedIn and, and there you can read up uh, on it. Awesome. And for, for our listeners, we'll make sure the link come to your, your LinkedIn profiles there. Um, now, Marcus, I, I know it's uh, late in the day for you in, over in Sweden. Um, just fun fact, you are my first Swedish interview. So I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. And um, my audience really appreciates this insight, as do I. So thank you very much. And it's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much for inviting me. I, I had a great time and I hope your listeners uh, enjoyed it as well.